Hey guys and welcome to Feywood. This is the next part of the Skeksy necklace. Um, you would have seen if you've been watching the videos that I've created this base with wool. Then I've gone over with some um, embroidery stitches in a sort of stump work type um, technique. And now I've decided to go with beadwork for the uh, world that the Skeksy is sort of swallowing or the um, sort of serpent character on the scepter is swallowing. Now I had um, really good gunmetal uh, seed beads. These are size 11 seed beads. The good thing about this stitching is the um, this part of the stump work, the felting and so forth, it was a little bit too um, raised and I really wanted it to be a smoother look because it kind of didn't look like the um, it was being swallowed. It, it looked more like it was too large and like larger than the beak and it, it just looked a bit strange so I really wasn't happy with um, how it was looking at that point. So the hope was doing these um, stitching and beadwork that maybe uh, the it would sort of smooth that shape out a little bit. Um, you can see that I am stitching my next line of beadwork kind of away from the first area that I did. I'm um, basically doing this because I want a, a really smooth finish overall and I was concerned if I started really beading, um, you know, right up against the last line of beadwork I just did, that it may not have a consistent sort of smooth finish when I'm done. Um, because the stitching would be sort of pulling in that one area and maybe allowing the rest of it to um, bulge out a bit more. So I've sort of done the stitching um, in between each line. So like, you know, whatever stitch, uh, I, I stitched the edge and I stitched the middle and then I'd stitch in between um, those two lines and then in between those two lines just ever gradually getting in and in and in um, if that makes sense so that hopefully the result would be a fairly smooth shape and I did want to add some color dimension to this as well so you can see on the tip of it I've used a um, silver seed bead that's a permanent galvanized uh, Toho bead and Against the uh, gunmetal colour, it looks like a highlight or a shine. And I've also uh, used that same silver for one of the rows along the line of the kind of world shape that it's swallowing. Because then that sort of makes it look shiny and gives it, uh, gives it some colour dimension. And I actually ended up stitching beads um, over the top of other beadwork. Like I wasn't too concerned if I had to squeeze the beads into, um, you know, if there wasn't enough space for it to lay completely flat. I wanted everything to be covered in the beadwork and no gaps really showing. Now I did want a little bit more shadow in the colouring so I actually did go back in with some embroidery floss and uh, did some like shading underneath the beak mainly um, and I knew I wanted even more shading possibly after this but because I'm at this point just about to do the um, feathers with the stump work stitches I want any beadwork that might be underneath or any um, embroidery I should say that's going to be underneath those like feather shapes to be done now so that I don't have to try and do it afterwards because it's going to be really tricky once they're in place. So it is a little 
tricky to use this on lacy stiff stuff because it isn't really designed for that kind of thread um, which is why you see me with the pliers and you will have seen that in earlier videos if you've watched other videos of me doing this it's worth doing though now <laughs> I will point out I have never done stump work before I'm aware though this is not the type of material that you would normally use for the stitching of stump work I didn't have anything else on hand and I just I didn't want to break the momentum um, and you know bother going out and getting something specific I just used a scrap of material instead and thought I'll see what happens no big deal if it didn't work out um, and yeah so it's a kind of a stretchy material which wasn't the great greatest for doing this it doesn't have a big weave in it either which is helpful for like embroidery stitches um, kind of want something like open weave um, so I'm using this wire. This is like a, a florist's wire. Nice and thin. It doesn't need to have, it doesn't need to be thick at all. Um, I guess I would say, what, what gauge would this be? I, it didn't say on it, but maybe 26 gauge, I guess. Just a real thin wire. Um, so you tack the wire on to the shape that you want and so if you remember I'm wanting those sort of feather slash gill shapes um, so I'm bending the wire around the edge of the little shapes that I'm wanting to create um, this is a technique I've seen people use before when they're making like leaves and things for stump work uh, they sort of tack the wire on and then stitch over the wire once it's tacked on in place with um, you know nice tight stitches um, I think they call this stab stitch I'm not as familiar with the stitches when it comes to uh, this type of embroidery because I usually do bead embroidery and and bead beading stitches so um, yeah I'm sure there's people out there watching wondering what on earth I'm on about uh, just know that I am new to this so I'm not at all trying to say that this is like a tutorial from an expert <laughs> this is me showing you what I worked out how to do for the necklace but you can see there I've um, done a nice tight stitching to cover all of the wire Now they call this stitch a uh, buttonhole stitch. Um, I always think of it as a blanket stitch. I think it's the same. I don't think there's any difference in either of them, but uh, whatever you'd like to call it, you basically stitch and then um, wrap the working thread over the top of the needle before you pull it all the way through. And then it starts to create this lovely little line edge around what you're doing um, which is quite handy later on which you'll see now one thing I do wish I was able to achieve was a bit of a sharper line at the um, end of these little feather things but it's sort of because of the way the stitch is I guess it, it sort of ended up quite curved uh, and there might be techniques to really sharpen that up that again you know take some um, experience and you know I'd like to do this sort of stitching again so I'm sure it won't be the first time won't be the last time it was the first time um, <laughs> because it's quite a handy stitch to use in this sort of beadwork um, and I just hid the wire underneath as you saw there uh, I just wanted one wire um, and used the like tucked the end of the other wire in underneath so now I'm stitching in between all of the other stitches that I've done just a straight you know um, I guess this is is this called stab stitch as well uh, just a straight stitch basically nice and tight And then once that's done you basically want to do the same thing but this time 
going um, from the ridge that you've created with the buttonhole stitch. So um, stitching in one side of the um, ridge and all the way to the other side where that little you know ridge was created by doing a buttonhole stitch um, and just leaving only that edge of the buttonhole stitch uh, showing and it gives it a lovely nice finish just looks really finished off I guess and then just hiding that thread at the back again So again, I've got my florist wire that I'm using um, and I just tack it on to start with. You really do want to tack it on, it's just so much easier, otherwise it starts to move around everywhere. So just doing that uh, spread apart tacking stitches helps to get it in place. And then again going over those stitches uh, once again with some nice tight um, stabbing stitch just covering it all up and then lastly going over it all again with the buttonhole stitch um, which creates that lovely little ridge line. Now this is a, a rayon thread that I'm using, um, a Goodman one, and it's just sort of slightly thick. Um, I found it really great to work with for this. You could use a finer thread, I'm sure. I haven't tried it yet, so, um, but I have seen it done. I just had this on hand and uh, the color was right for what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, I was really happy with how it looked. So again, once the buttonhole stitch is done, you're stitching just a straight stitch um, across and then lastly a straight stitch over the top of everything except for that um, edge line that the buttonhole stitch creates around everything. And then hide the thread at the back. So the back's a little bit messy and you will see a little bit of this um, but it's going to be fairly flush to the piece so I wasn't too concerned. I'm sure there are techniques to kind of make a fully three-dimensional piece so that it looks good on front and back. Maybe it's just being a bit more careful with the stitches even um, but I wasn't too concerned about that because I knew you would only see the tiniest bit of the back if anything. Um, so you do want to trim out the material that you used and just be really, 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 really careful because it's so upsetting when you cut thread when you finish a piece. I have this happen to me quite often with embroidery beadwork. You just accidentally nick some stitching and have to redo a whole section because it comes apart. Um, same thing here. You just want to carefully snip the edge as closely as you can to the stitches without snipping the stitches. Now I did go ahead and use a lighter as you can see um, to singe the edges firstly so they don't continue to fray um, but also to neaten it up and kind of get rid of any little fluffy bits. You do need to be really careful with this obviously you could easily singe the thread and not be able to use it if you um, go in too heavy. So now that they're all done, um, I'm ready to attach them to the piece. Now I do this anytime I use like wire work with embroidery work. Um, I usually use a nice thick embroidery needle just to make a hole large enough to insert the wire. And so that's what I've done here as well. 
sometimes it's a bit tricky and you have to give it a few goes to kind of get the wire through, especially if you've got layers of stitching and things to get through. And I did just sort of wrap it around some of the stitches at the back um, initially just to keep it in place. So now I need to fix those wires to the back with some stitches. I tend to curve them around a bit and flatten them. Um, I like to have um, some angles and things that the stitches will really hold the piece in place. If you just leave it flat, the wire could come free. It's better to curl it around a few times, um, making sure it's not going to stick out where you're going to end up cutting the lacy stiff stuff. Um, and then just stitching it in place and then I did some stitches over the top too because there was a little bit of wire showing on this side so I wanted to make sure I had some embroidery stitches over the top of that. I did end up going back in and putting a couple of tacking stitches on these as well because they just kept moving a little bit so but that's later on. Um, but basically that's where we're at at the moment guys. I hope you've enjoyed watching me do this part of the necklace and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye guys. <laughs>